Welcome to the Hold the Line <laughs> podcast. Sean Foyt here. I am with my good friend Kongman Lee. Yes, sir. I spell it right, say it right, pronounce it right. Yes, sir. We're in Phoenix at the Turning Point uh, America Fest event. Uh, it's a lot of energy here, a lot of excitement, a lot of young people. Yeah. yeah. Tons of young people, and uh, actually gives me a lot of hope for the future of America and what's happening in this nation and people waking up. But I want to hear, I want everybody to hear your story because um, I think it's really powerful um, being a Korean American and your history and your background, going to one of our ministry schools that we mm-hmm. helped start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then how did you get to where you are here? Going through a little bit of cancel culture, and then how did you wind up here? What sustained you to keep fighting for, uh, you know, all the, the values conservatives should be standing on, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so share with us. Yeah, so basically I grew up in the church as mm-hmm. most Korean Americans tend to, right? And I took my faith seriously growing up, but I was very apolitical because I was like, oh, that's like for like idiots and nerds, whatever, you know? Right. It, was, it was very divisive. I knew that. So right. I was like, okay, whatever. And then throughout college, I was pretty liberal. I went to USC. So that's in LA, you know, okay. pretty liberal. Yes. And I, but I just went through, I did ministry. I went to church. Mm-hmm. I did, you know, worship, everything. And then I finally was red-pilled my last semester of college, fall of 2019. I realized all the lies surrounding President Trump. I thought that guy was like a moron, a racist, a bigot. I thought he was terrible. I thought everyone who was conservative were like redneck hillbillies in the middle of Wisconsin. Like I thought that's what it was, right? And then, That's the narrative at, at, at USC. Yeah, yeah. No, that is. And that's the narrative on all right. college campuses, right, right? Right, right, right. And then so when I woke up to the reality that, okay, Trump didn't call uh, Mexicans, rapists, and drug dealers. He called people crossing the border to that. Uh, and I was like, okay, but is that actually happening? I was like, frick, like tons of criminal activity happening at the border, you know, child trafficking, gang rape for women, um, all the drugs and all the right. crime. And I was right. like, this is a problem. Yeah. And as a believer, yeah. I believe that we shouldn't advocate for this or even tolerate this. And I was right. like, what else have I, have I been lied to? And then so I started to really dig deep and I realized that as a conservative, in today's America, as in today's America, as a Christian, your only political stance can really be conservative, right. uh, because the left is so unhinged and they're so uh, out of whack. Anyways, that was fall of 2019, and then I ended college, and then I went to YWAM uh, in Kona, and I was in the fire and fragrance school. school yeah. And there, like God, really just you know changed my heart. He really grew my heart for the nations, mm-hmm. uh, but also there, He really grew my heart for family. Yeah, um, because I saw Andy Bird and mm-hmm. I saw how much he loved fam, loved family and loves family, how much he loves and cares for the children. Mm-hmm. And he also talked about abortion there, too. And that's where God really grew my heart for that. Right. And then uh, COVID happened. So we can go on outreach. I was supposed to go to Mongolia and India. And unfortunately, we didn't go. And then I came back and then I started to realize how politicized COVID was getting. And then I was still pretty quiet because I was like, OK, I don't want to like ruffle any feathers. Right. And then George Floyd died. Right. And George Floyd died. And then all my friends who used to be very apolitical are suddenly uh, an avowed expert on racism in this country. Right. right? And they didn't know anything. Like, I knew all this was bunk and this was all crap. And this was fabricating narratives from the enemy and to divide us and divide the church. And I was like, shoot, I need to speak out. And I spoke out. And most of my friends from college, these are these are friends I did ministry with. You know, I served in church together with. I served um, together. We went out to the homeless. We fed, mm-hmm. fed people. We did all this stuff <laughs> together. And it's like, they, they hate me now just because I said, hey, they, maybe there's things we should consider before we jump on this bandwagon. Right. And were, I, were, were they running with the police brutality narrative? Or what yeah. Was the, okay. Yeah, it was, it was the all, like, this <clears throat> country systemically racist. I mean, these are the pastors that I very, very highly respected in Southern California right. came out was like, the time to be silent is over. Racism, racism, racism. I'm like, dude, like, relax. You're supposed to be sober-minded as you know, pastors and as shepherds of your flock. You're in charge of the souls of your congregation and yet you're bowing down to the culture, to a godless culture, right? right? And I was just like, what is going on? And then so I started to speak out and this is where I realized that this isn't a political battle. This is not simply political. It's not cultural, it's spiritual. Right. And because it's spiritual, it invades into all these spaces, right. but it's spiritual. It's deeply spiritual. So I started to realize, oh, shoot, like the enemy has such a grip mm-hmm. on the hearts and the minds of our generation. Right. Um, this is why, again, you know, transgenderism is up, you know, gay activity and identifying people is skyrocketing right now. Uh, children are depressed, a lot of mental illness, right. all these things because it's deeply spiritual. Deeply spiritual. Yeah. So then I was like, shoot, there's no room for the professing believer who walks in the spirit and who listens to the voice of God and loves the word of God 
to stay silent about these yeah. issues that are so clearly like revealed to us in scripture right. any longer. We can't stay silent. So I started to speak out and I started to make content on Instagram, on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, you know, YouTube, all of them. And then my platform just started to grow as people started to resonate with my message. Yeah. And then what really like blew me up uh, was during the Stop Asian Hate Movement. Uh, where they're blaming all like all these you know anti-Asian hate crimes with, right. uh, on white people. Right. And it, it was horrific because during the Atlanta shooting, right, there were two white people who died. Mm -hmm. But then they're saying that whiteness is terrorism. They're saying stuff like this. And I was like, what are you doing? These grieving families, you're saying that their skin color is the reason that they're dead. Like, what are you <clears> saying? And then so I started to speak out. I'm like, this is not white supremacy. The people attacking Asians, except this Atlanta shooter, right? are you know inner city black people it's not white people they're not people who watch tucker right. carlson tonight every you know night and are inspired right. by trump's rhetoric <laughs> like these people don't like trump they don't like conservatives but they're just people in the inner cities attacking asians vulnerable asians that's all it is and it's nothing new but obviously right. i think it has been exacerbated under covid and i started to speak out a lot of asians hated me for this but um i think a lot of christians and a lot of conservatives resonated and appreciated me as an asian speaking out and then so now, you know, I just continue to speak out about everything, about abortion, about against the uh, Biden administration and their corruption and uh, about, you know, the corruption and the deception around COVID. And I just do all these things because I do truly believe that, um, again, this is a spiritual battle. Right. This is pure spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And as one who, you know, I do believe in not only evangelizing the gospel, mm -hmm. but evangelizing the Christian ethic. That yeah. if we do believe that God is the source of all things good, mm -hmm and where we get that from is the Word of God, then right. we as believers should want the Word of God to permeate all aspects and all spheres of society. Mm -hmm. And we absolve that responsibility and right. we abdicated that to the enemy, right? Because if we take God out of school, we take God out of culture, we take God out of movies, entertainment, everything, what's gonna replace it? There's nothing neutral yeah. in this world. So what's gonna replace it is the lies of the enemy, right? right. It's the deception of the enemy. And that's all it is. And so that's how I got involved. You know, um, a lot of my friends hate me now, <laughs> um, but you, it is you, what it is. Where, so at one point you said you got red-pilled, mm -hmm. you had this kind of awakening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you went to ministry school, and then <clears throat> when you started speaking out after the protests in 2020, mm -hmm. um, was there a moment where you were like, okay, there's no turning back now? Mm -hmm. Or was it kind of like you just dug your heels and went harder? Or, or was there something that came on you where you felt like, okay, now I have to take a stand mm -hmm. and I'm not looking back? Because I, yeah. think, I think, you know, one of the things that I've found in my own journey is um, there's a sacrifice, obviously, when you, when you stand up, you, t you, you voice your opinion. Of course, you lose friends, you lose followers, mm -hmm. whatever. But I think a lot of people are kind of caught in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, where it's kind of like they, they want to speak up when it feels like there might be the least amount of resistance. Yeah. And then they kind of just back away and then they kind of and and I think it'd be encouraging to everybody to know, like, OK, once you took that stand, there are people that left there. But at the same time, the Lord added so much more. Mm -hmm. Talk talk with me through that. Yeah, I think. Well, first of all, I think when I woke up to the reality that it was spiritual warfare after right. after the riots of 2020, um, that's when I was like, I need to take a stand. Yeah. Uh, but I've definitely, throughout this whole past year, I've been doing this. I've definitely struggled with like, okay, like, should I keep doing this? Like, what am right. I doing? Am I doing the right thing? But I think, <clears throat> I think in terms of the moment that I knew I was never turning back was when um, my platform started to grow. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize people knew me as this conservative Christian guy. Mm -hmm. um, and so even a lot of people, it was really funny. I, I found this really strange too, where a lot of my YWAM friends also canceled me. They're like, oh, you hate black people. I'm like, I really don't. We hung out. You're my black friend. And then they're like, no, you hate black people because you don't stand up for BLM. Um, but I think um, it was when I got canceled. So basically, uh, I shared Candace Owens' video about George Floyd mm -hmm. on Facebook. And I was like, okay, like, <clears throat> I know this is very contentious. So I just want you, everyone to like just consider these points and like thoughtfully go through it because everything you know about George Floyd and BLM is not true. And then so many of my friends from church and ministry and college uh, from YWAM and longtime childhood friends were just like, like 
crapping on me and saying the nastiest things to me, uh, deriding me and mocking me and saying that I hated people and I'm a fake Christian. I had a banner about um, fundraising for missions uh, for, you know, YWAM. And they're like, oh, take that banner down. You're fake. You're not even Christian. How dare you call yourself Christian? And in that moment, I think, was really the moment I, was, I knew there's no turning back. And I think all believers, because Jesus promises that the world would hate us, right, for right. following him. And this is not a warning, it's a promise. Right. Because a world that hates Christ <coughs> will hate you for loving right. him, for serving him, for glorifying him, for following him. And so if you as a believer aren't facing that resistance yeah. from a godless world that hates mm -hmm. you and from you know, um, Sunday Christians who don't actually, who aren't really Christian and mm -hmm. the extent of their Christianity may be like, right. handing out bulletins on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have to take a step back and repent. I think it was John Wesley who said this, but like, uh, it was like, he's like, whenever I'm not facing uh, opposition from the world, I repent. Yeah. And I, I say, Lord, like, what am I doing wrong? How can I serve you more? How can mm -hmm. I uh, be more fierce for the gospel and for your works and for your kingdom? And so I think that was the moment I realized there's no turning back where like people like knew that I was standing for the truth and hated me for it. Mm -hmm. And I think all believers, we will encounter this, right? Um, whether it's in a workplace, whether mm -hmm. it's in you know a cafe, whether it's a close friend that we mm -hmm. have, a childhood friend, um, because a godless world and a world without Christ and a world that avowedly hates Christ, like these people hate Christianity. They mm -hmm. say Jesus Christ is a symbol of white supremacy. Right. Um, if they're not <clears throat> giving you any backlash for you standing for the truth and for the gospel, then I think we have to take a step back and ask, like, what are we doing wrong? And are we actually living a kingdom yeah. life? And so I think that was probably the moment that when I got canceled from all my friends uh, who are Christian and non-Christian or avowedly Christian and non-Christian, um, and they like branded me as this like, you know, white adjacent white supremacist uh, who hated black people and just wanted to lick the boot of the white man. <laughs> when I was just using scripture, I was like, here, this is what right, it says in scripture. Right, right. And then here are the facts about police brutality, about, you know, race relations in this country. And I'm like, I care about the truth. And I'm just saying this because, right. you know, uh, the truth does set you free. Right. And, you know. Now, on the flip side, <clears throat> on the conservative movement mm -hmm. side and the new doors that have opened for you, there's also people that don't know the Lord mm -hmm. or that are conservative or that are standing up for these values or whatever, but they haven't had their heart really changed by mm -hmm. Jesus. Have you encountered a lot of that stuff, too, where it's an, kind of like a new mission field, so to speak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open no, to you? I definitely see, like, conferences like this as a mission field mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by that is like because a lot of conservatives are anti-woke or right. avowed conservatives are anti-woke but they're not really conservative and so to be a conservative means do you want to preserve and conserve the natural law and where do we get the natural law and natural order from we get it from God right right um, uh, we get law from nature nature is God you know uh, our founding fathers believe this and uh, this is what really undergirds, undergirds conservatism mm -hmm. and so I actually know like a good close friend of mine, he was atheist, he was agnostic, but mm -hmm. he was more libertarian at first and mm -hmm. he became very conservative because he realized the merits of conservatism. He's like, yeah. well, where does this come from? And then he started to watch, uh, you know, Mike Winger on YouTube? Mm. Yeah, he started to watch Mike Winger and he was like, oh shoot, wait, this all makes sense. And then he gave his life to Christ and he's getting baptized uh, this year. Wow. Um, but like, like things like this. And I, I think they already have their step in the door mm -hmm. when they're red-pilled red -pilled, and then they're anti-woke. Uh, but then they, they start to ask themselves because these political contentions and everything in the news, it's deeply, deeply spiritual. Right. That's why the woke and the liberals get so mad when you say men are not women because it, for them it's religious and right. that's their spiritual doctrine. And mm -hmm. so when you say no to that, they freak out. Um, right. But uh, when it comes to Christianity, I think conservatives start to realize, okay, like, where do we get this idea of good and evil from, right and wrong? Where do we get this from? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good place for us as believers to be here in the midst and be like, hey, that's from God, right. and that's from Jesus, mm -hmm. and he is the arbiter of all things good and evil. Yeah. He is the arbiter of truth, yeah. and he's the one who created you. Mm -hmm. He made you in his, in his image, and he loves you, and he loves you so much that he, being rich in love and mercy, sent his one and only son to die for mm -hmm. you on a cross so that you can be reconciled to him, although we were undeserving, right? right? And, and so I think this is a great place, um, and this is in and of itself a mission field. I did, I'll, I also on the regular get backlash from uh, conservatives because I say, for example, for, uh, for example, I uh, had a series of posts where I talked about how pornography is not conservative right. and how pornography destroys, mm -hmm. um, and how porn stars can't be conservative. 
And then so many people were like, you're so bigoted. Right. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, right. a porn star can be conservative. Why not? And I'm like, what are you talking about? No, they absolutely cannot be conservative because as conservatives, we believe that marriage is between one man and one woman. Right. And we believe that sex is <clears throat> sacred and yeah. God has created for the act of procreation and for the strengthening of the bond between a man and a woman mm -hmm. in the covenant of marriage. This is not extreme to think that pornography is not conservative. Right. I mean, the founding fathers made it illegal when they first started, uh, but I got a lot of backlash. And so, you know, even as someone in, deeply in the conservative yeah. movement, mm -hmm. I get backlash and I get hate uh, from avowed conservatives because to them, um, they're more anti-woke than they are conservative, right. which still means like they still believe in loose sexual ethics and, right. you know, just sleeping around and things like that. But I want to be there as a witness to them as well yeah. and say like, hey, like there's more for you. Right. And us abiding within the guardrails that God has set for us in his word right. is actually more liberating. And us being a slave to our flesh yeah. and slave to sin is not freedom. That's slavery. Yeah. But us being a slave to Christ, that's true freedom. Well, and they're, and they're not, you know, the, the thing about some of those people is they're, they're, their aim and their God is like, this version of America that they think, you know, is, is this like that, that, that's their, their goal, mm -hmm. you know? And, and for me, it's like, <clears throat> you know, I didn't even start caring about America until a few years ago, to mm -hmm. be honest, until the Lord really gave me a heart and began to show me like, what am I passing down to my kids? And, and, you know, obviously it's place in the world, in world missions, mm -hmm. the geopolitical landscape of what's happening in the end times, all that kind of stuff, right? And so I think that for a lot of them, it's it's a little misguided, you know, mm -hmm. because they kind of make an idol out of these these things, not realizing that, like you're saying, the guardrails come from God. Mm -hmm. You know, the natural laws come from God, yep. you know? And if you're not, if you're not willing to conserve family, mm -hmm then what are you really conserving? Exactly. That's why I say, um, if you're not pro-life, you're not conservative. Because if you don't conserve, if, if, if you don't even conserve the right to life, yeah. then what are you? But again, like abortion is just not a single issue. It's deeply tied into pornography, right. sex trafficking, the family, right? right? The reason why abortion is so um, like celebrated today is because parents don't want to take the responsibility and the mantle of fatherhood and motherhood, mm -hmm. right? They just want to live their own life and they're only looking inward and they worship self and they don't want to have kids and they don't see kids as a blessing, they see it as a burden. So that's why abortion is so prevalent, right? So like you said, it's an attack on the family. And I think a lot of what's going on in society today, whether it's critical race theory, mm -hmm. uh, queer theory, all the gender indoctrination in schools, yeah. um, the COVID stuff too, definitely yeah. the COVID stuff with masking kids and making them social distance and yeah. um, see themselves as like vectors of disease or something. Um, abortion, all these yeah. terrible issues are all an attack on the family. Why? It's because the family is the God-ordained institution for children to thrive, prosper, right. and be inculcated with good, godly values. Mm -hmm. You take away the family, you don't have that. Right. That's why, again, that's why communists hated the family. Right. They destroyed the right. family. And again, they also hated religion, especially Christianity. You know, communists don't actually hate religion in and of itself. They want it, They want um, people to worship the state. Right. Um, but they hate Christianity right. because Christianity has always posed a threat, a threat. to tyranny. Yeah. Why? Because our authority ultimately does not come from them. Right. Our ultimate authority is God and we bow down to them. Right. And then so when it comes down to it, when they demand us to bow down, <clears throat> just think about, about uh, Nebuchadnezzar, right? And he was like, bow down. He's like, no. Right. Because why? Our authority ultimately aren't earthly authority. It's God. Right. And so it's, it's so funny. Christians always talk about Romans 13. I remember um, when you went to L.A. Um, to, um, you know, have a fundraiser and, you mm -hmm. know, do the Let Us Worship event um, for Skid Row. I know so, I saw so many Christians rag on you and say, Romans 13, <laughs> Romans 13, Romans 13, Romans 13. And I'm just like, dude, read the passage. Right. First of all, it says to submit to them. Right. But it that word submit is the same word that Paul uses in Ephesians 5 when he says for wives submit to your husbands. Mm -hmm. But we never say wives for wives to submit to a tyrannical husband. Right. So why would we call believers believers to submit to a tyrannical government? Right. No. It's, and yeah. it also says in that passage that government is a force for good. And if they're not a force for good, then why should we submit to them? Yeah. Um, and so with all these things considered, I think um, 
we have to get back to the family. And this is why I'm so passionate about the family. I'm passionate about masculinity. And masculinity doesn't mean being a macho guy uh, per se. You know, I'm not like a super macho guy. But it means to be strong. It means to be courageous. But also means to be gentle, uh, loving, caring. But ultimately yeah. to embrace your God-given calling as a man to be a provider and protector yeah. in society of the most vulnerable. And that's obviously our women and our you, children. Do you find that... Do you find that the in the Christian Reformed circles, um, do you find it more aligns more with some of the conservative principles? Whereas sometimes in the spirit filled charismatic world, it feels like there's yeah yeah I don't know, yeah it's interesting. It's it's so interesting. I mean, I'm like charismatic and spirit filled, and, and to the bone. Yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. who I am, but especially with the revelation of COVID, mm -hmm. with all the gender stuff, with all of those things happening right now, yeah. like sometimes I gravitate towards people that are just, man, somebody just needs to speak the truth. Yeah, yeah. You know, and however, and I don't know, there doesn't, there's, we just need more courage. Yeah. We need more young people. And this is why I love what you're doing. I, I love, I applaud your engagement in the cultural war and, and, and your heart. But I love it because I know your heart behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just this angry dude on Twitter that's just <laughs> ragging on people, but you're actually joyful. Mm -hmm. You love you love um, revival. Mm -hmm. You believe yeah. that God is going to change hearts, yeah. but we have to take a stand on this. Mm -hmm. And I think that my my heart, even in this interview and really just you sharing, is I want to inspire other people to be able to do that. Yeah, you know, to yeah. where they they take whatever it is their realm of influence. You know, mm -hmm. most people think, oh, well, I don't have a podcast that reaches thousands, or I don't have hundreds of thousands of followers, I don't have whatever, but but everybody's influential. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody has the ability to to awaken the minds and the hearts of people around them. And that's ultimately what we're called to do. We're salt and light. Yeah. You know, and I think now more than ever we need that. Mm-hmm. 100%. And I, I love what you said this morning about how it's easy to get angry and just like rag on people and try yeah. to own the libs, you know. <laughs> but uh, as believers, we have the eternal source of joy. And peace. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing we can do as a witness to the world is to be that. Yeah. Right? Like you said, when the Antifa guys are like shouting in your face and yelling, just like, hey man, yeah. what's up? Yeah. Like Jesus loves you, man. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what we need to do because for me, it's very easy to get caught up in this. And obviously, right. you know, righteous anger, there's a time and place right. for it yeah. when you see a horrific. I mean, I just, right. whenever I think about abortion, I get angry. Oh my it's, gosh. It's, a, it's an absolute <clears throat> atrocity. And yeah. it's so insane that we claim to be a moral society, yet we're killing over 2,000 of our babies every single day. But um, in the midst of that, can we still have peace? Right. And in the midst of it, in the midst of that, can we still rejoice that God is right. sovereign yeah. and that God is in control and He is still good? And for me, I've been very convicted by that lately because, again, most of these people who really, really believe in this gender stuff and they, you know, paint, you know, dye their hair blue, they get tattoos all over their face, piercings everywhere, they claim to be Satanists and all that stuff. They're just broken people. Right. They're broken, broken yeah. people. A lot of the times coming from broken homes, again, which is why I'm very passionate about the family. Right. But they're broken people. And they find um, the social justice movements as their source of meaning and mm -hmm. purpose and joy. Yeah. But then it's always empty. And that's right. why they're so yeah. broken. They keep, yeah. they're getting, they get, they always get more depressed. And it's a vicious cycle. Right. But then as believers, in the midst of that, as we stand in truth and for the truth, mm -hmm. if we're able to witness to them and say, yeah, but in the midst of all the craziness, mm -hmm. and I hate your politics, but I still love you. Yeah. And I still, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that God has made you yeah. fearfully and wonderfully. And I'm glad to be alive too. And yeah. I have, I'm always happy. I'm always joyous, joyous. And it's, it's, you know, life is worth celebrating. Yeah. And if we have that mindset and we're able to witness to believe, uh, uh, non-believers like this and to the world, I think people will be attracted. And yeah. I always think about John 17, um, and I was really convicted because Francis Chan always <clears throat> talks about this. Um, but like when we have unity and love within the church, and then so, you know, Jesus prays to, uh, to the Father and says like, let them be one as you and I are one, so mm -hmm. that the world will know that you have sent your son. And I think there's beauty in the church being unified in one mission to love the world, to love God and make disciples, right? Mm -hmm. And I think for us, we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus yeah. constantly as we link arms and we have to be, again, united in the truth. Right. And of course we have to call out the wolves and expose that. But I think um, what, what I've seen very beautifully um, 
you know, exemplified this past year. It's like Reformed Christians, like Charismatic right. Christians, and even Catholics, right? All banding together yeah. and standing for the gospel, right. for the truth. And I think there's such beauty in that. It has been, it's been really beautiful, and there's yeah. far more that unites us than divides Absolutely. us. And, and there's a lot of people that, that really do, they feel, and this is what's powerful about events like this and other things, is that they, they feel like they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's my heart, is I, I want to see people rise up, take a stand, you know, for the truth, yeah. and, and be willing to, hey, there is going to be a cost, mm -hmm. but God's going to open a lot of amazing doors. Mm -hmm. And I, I do believe <clears throat> on a prophetic level that, you know, 2022 and, and all these twos and everything that I keep seeing and keep talking about, I, I do believe it is a, is a year of open doors where mm -hmm. keys are given yeah. to open doors. Yeah, so 100%. I'm excited they're opening for you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, how can people stay in touch? Yeah, so I'm on all platforms. You can just find me, The Kongman Lee. Um, it's I'm, Kongman. Yes, not Kangman. If you say Kangman, you are committing a hate crime against me. Um, <laughs> <Hey>, stop Asian <laughs> hate. Stop Asian hate. But yeah, I'm like shadow banned on a certain platforms, especially Instagram, so you have to type out the full name, yeah. not the full username. But yeah, that's how you can find me, and you'll see me rant about how much I love we Jesus. We pull them on stage and let us worship, and we, we'll, you'll see them. We'll, we'll be rolling together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Thank you.